Well, welcome to the Happy and Married Book class curriculum. So good to have you with us today. We're going to be in chapter three. Trace. Mm, be kind. Be nice. <laughs> this is about the secret language of uh, kindness. So the scripture says the two shall become one. You know, for this reason, a man should. This is the first scripture that God gives us about marriage. Mm -hmm. the, the two shall become one, will become one. It's going to happen. It didn't say the two became one right. when they got married. It says they two. So it's a process. Right. The process is body, soul, and spirit, right? The, the process, these two separate people are being drawn together. I mean, even just consider how you got drawn together, mm -hmm. right? You were from Ohio. <laughs> That's where you grew up till you were how old? Twelve. Yeah, and I'm from Arizona. But you moved out. I mean, imagine if all the things that had to happen right. for me to get lucky enough to find you. Aw, yeah. cute. A lot of things happened, though, Yeah. that drew us together. Even how we met. You can kind of go back and look. And I, when I talk to people, when you talk about how they met, yeah, it's they're always cool. like, yeah, God was moving. Things yeah. were happening that were drawing us together. Yes. So you get married. You don't stop being drawn together. Right. right? We continue to be drawn together. And so this is, this is that chapter about being drawn together. Yes, In fact, the next three chapters are about being drawn together. Body, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. Okay. So Jeremiah 31 and verse 3, that's, this is what it says. It says, with loving kindness, I draw you near. You know, God shows us the secret to the coming together. And he does this by drawing us through loving kindness. His loving kindness is what draws us near. It doesn't push us. It doesn't compel us. But it draws us. And it's a, an expression of love through kindness. You know, that love is an action. And um, we show love, or one of the ways we show love to each other is by kindness. Yeah, and isn't it interesting that the, the drawing near isn't through uh, tough love? Like yeah. he didn't say, you know, I'm going to draw you near through love. Right. He, because there's lots of different kinds of love, right? Well, he didn't, he's not, he didn't say, I'm going to draw you through, near through truth in love. Well, i got to speak truth. You know, here's the truth. You have an anger issue. No, he, he, was, he was saying, I'm going to draw you near through loving Kindness. He wanted to make sure he showed us which characteristic of yes. love yeah. is an attractor. Right. And and when we were dating, when I say we, I mean like everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you were you were kind, mm -hmm. right? We talked nice to each other. How do I look? Oh, you look good. Oh, I like that shirt on you. That things. Oh, I like your hair today. I like. And then uh, oh, you're so smart. And you, you said things. Oh, I love your family. Your family's awesome. I love your dad. Your dad's so cool. And then you're being kind. There was kindness flowing. Yeah. yeah. And so there was a constant drawing near. Wow. But then after you get married, um, I, I think sometimes we get loving snippy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that does happen. <laughs> because you're living together now. Yes. And uh, you start to see each other's imperfections. You maybe. start to know each other. And also you want like, <laughs> hey, the rings on your finger. I don't have to be kind well, all that's the time true anymore. Too, yeah. Right, you're stuck with me, yeah, and so I can be snippy, yeah. And but what is so if loving kindness draws us near, what does loving rudeness do? Uh, it tears us apart. Yeah. So any kind of rudeness, uh, loving rudeness, <laughs> I don't think there's a such thing. <laughs> it's it's pushing the other person away. Right. Uh, but you know, here it comes. With, you know, I don't like your this, and I don't like your that, and you need to stop this. And I, you know, men men were like, hey, I just hate being late. That's not who I am. And so then we're all. The kindness just left the room, you know. You keep leaving the toilet seat up or whatever it is. <laughs> kindness is departed from the home. And then the drawing of near stops happening instead it starts to separate. Exactly. So um, diving in a little bit more about the loving kindness thing, uh, the scripture in Song of Songs 1 and verse 3, it says, Because of the fragrance of your good ointments, this is the girl talking. Your name is ointment poured forth. Therefore, the virgins love you. Wow. This is really talking about, um, she's really talking about her man here. And the woman is really referring to um, the great name of her man. And, you know, a woman wants a man with a good name. It's a, it's a, a name. What is a name? A name is a title. It, it uniquely defines uh, the characteristics of a person. Um, it, it defines who you are and it represents that, you know, your characteristics, your identity, who you are, all these different kinds of things. And, you know, it's the good, the bad and the ugly things can come represent who you are as a name. Um, but she is loving the uniqueness of her man and she speaks highly of it. In fact, she notices that her man is so highly favored 
the ointment, the, the, I guess the smell, it, the fragrance. Yeah. I like fragrance better yeah. than smell. Um, yeah, that boys, everyone boys smell. around goes, whoa, he, he's different. And, and she knows it, but she loves the soul, the soul of this man. Um, she, she loves everything uniquely about her lover. And I think our souls are flawed, right? So the soul is made up of the mind, the will, and the emotions, and we all have flaws in our soul. Our spirit's born again. It's brand new. It's awesome. The soul has baggage. And so when she says, I'm loving his mm-hmm. name, I'm loving everything about him, she's saying like the good, the bad, like you said, and the, and the ugly. I accept you the way you are. And, and one of the things that we learn in, in marriage is that opposites do attract don't they? Yep. That uh, we're different, <laughs> right? My name's Jason. Her name is Kelly. And, and in that name, right, we know the name of Jesus, the name of God. The, the names say more to us than just a name, but it's it's a unique identifier of, of what this person's capable of, what they can do, how, how they interact in my life, what they mean to me. And so she's saying, yeah, I love all these things. And, mm-hmm. and, and even the things that are different than me, Right? Isn't it funny how God's brought us together and opposites attract, positive and negative, magnets, boom, polar opposites. But the more opposite they are, the more they're drawn to each other. Right. There's an accepting of the differences that we have from each other. We were at a restaurant and I wanted something sweet and she wanted something salty. So, but she ordered the waffles and I ordered the omelet, the green chili omelet. Was that I ordered the waffles? No, you, I don't think so. I think you ordered. Now be kind. <laughs> Don't order waffles. Be kind. <laughs> so I ordered the waffles. Of course I did because I'm the sweet. And she ordered the, uh, what was it? A, it was green chili eggs. Yeah. So good. <laughs> but then what ended up happening is we ate half of each other's yeah. food because after she had her salty, she's like, well, I want something sweet. it came and it looked really good, so then I wanted yours. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we recognize that, that the, the differences are actually meant to draw us together. And, yes. and we complement each other's strengths and weaknesses. So... Part of loving the soul means to love the weaknesses. You know, instead of saying, well, you know, I've got to change these things about this person so that I can accept them. Mm -hmm. That's what the world does. I'm going to I'm going to fix you and then I'll accept you. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I can't accept all of this. Mm -hmm. No, that's not true. When you said I do, you accepted all of it exactly (laughs) as it was. And isn't that what people want? People want to be accepted exactly as they are. And what a great gift you could give your spouse by saying, exactly as you are, your name is ointment to me. It's perfect. Everything about you. Change nothing. Yeah. When, when you stop asking someone to change, they're free now yeah. to grow. Yeah. Isn't that true? It's, it's very true. Well, let's uh, jump into this scripture. Uh, Song of Songs 2, 3, and 4. Like an apple tree among trees of the forest... <laughs> An apple tree. So is my beloved among the young men. Whoa. I'd like to sit in his shade. <laughs> I don't think I've ever d- delighted to sit in your shade, babe. Yeah, well, you well actually, in Arizona, you have shaded me sometimes. That's right. You know, I have. It's because I'm like I a young get, apple tree. I just get right behind your little shadow. And I'm fruitful, <laughs> and you love to, to enjoy my productivity. Right. You believe in me. I delight to sit in his shade. Mm. <laughs> And his fruit is sweet to my taste. Yeah. He brought me into the banquet hall, and he looked at me lovingly. Well, I think that's a really interesting one there. He looked at me lovingly. You know that uh, your wife is, she, she wants to know that you're still smitten, right? That she, she catches you checking her out. <laughs> look at how, now he's, seriously though, look how he's not distracted. Look how yeah. she noticed that he was looking. That he was captivated. Right. Remember when she first walked in and you were cap- you weren't distracted? She wants to know that she's still the most important thing in the room to you. That there's nothing more interesting. Not the TV. <laughs> not the whatever. Things that distract us. That you're, you're just, oh, you walked in. You know? And it, it, it interrupts your thoughts. Because that's how you still are. You're captivated by her. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, you know, if we look at this for shoot, she, she's talking about him. So let's look at how she talks about him. She says, my lover is an apple tree. What he's, he's tall. He's fruitful. You know, she didn't call him a little bush. She didn't call him a shrub. <laughs> look at my shrub. He's so cute. <laughs> I'm, Shrubby. Like, I'm like a shrub. <laughs> <laughs> no, she called him an apple tree. And really, 
what does that represent? It just means that he stood out. Like among all the trees, among all the men in the city or wherever she was, she was like, oh, that's my man. He stands out. Um, and he has the fruit I desire. Yeah. Whoa. And, and, <laughs> and yeah, we'll get to that in a couple of chapters. <laughs> uh, but, but look at how she talks about him. You know, in, in the world today, that's a lost language. People mm-hmm. don't talk about each other that way anymore. Now it's just all about showing the very worst parts of someone. You turn on the news and you mm-hmm. just hear, oh, this person, and then here's the worst part of them. They make a biography movie of some kind, and, and you watch it, and you find out all the really bad things about that person. We live in a society that tries to highlight the negative in each other. Mm-hmm. And you could get in your groups of friends. You could get around your family, uh, extended family, whatever. And uh, people are talking bad about their spouses. Mm-hmm. Like, well, oh my gosh, I can't stand him anymore. I can't stand him. You never believe what she did. What if we just opted out of that conversation? Right. What if that conversation doesn't work Speaking and we decide to go with the word of God? Mm-hmm. And so maybe he's not like an apple tree, but that's what she's saying. Mm-hmm. Look what she's saying about him. Mm-hmm. And you might say, well, my husband's not like that. Well, why don't we speak things that are not as though they right. were? Start to say what you desire out of your spouse. Maybe you're like, well, my wife's not like that. She's very this and she's very that. And you have things to complain about. But don't let those things out of your mouth. Instead, speak the secret language of kindness. Mm -hmm. Really? So good. My wife's so awesome. It'll get on other people, too. You have to start having those conversations. My wife's amazing. You know what she did today? You know, she, (laughs) I don't know. What did you do? She made me coffee. It was was amazing. What? You're wonderful. (laughs) And so yeah, yeah. Having, having kind things to say. So in conclusion, we've been talking about some secret languages now. We talked about the secret language of desire, finding out each other's mm-hmm. needs and desires on the inside. The secret language of remembering. Oh, before that was the secret language of listening, learning how to listen to each other. Then we did the secret language of remembering. And this chapter, the secret language of kindness. Mm-hmm.